Ciao friends, and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to show you a feature that is not often used by Power BI developers, that is the capability of defining the detailed rows expression at the table level and at the column level. Now, first of all, what is the detailed rows? Detail rows defines the set of columns that are returned as part of a drill-through operations. That operation is mainly useful with Excel, because Excel sends drill-through commands to the analysis services engine in Power BI. Now, if it ever happened to you that you are using a pivot table in Excel to browse your model and you double-click on one cell, you see the details of that measure meaning that you see the detailed rows of the fact table that have been used in order to compute their measure. And this is especially useful whenever you want to go and look at the single details of how a number has been computed. By default, the engine returns a set of columns and a set of rows that you can customize using detailed rows. But as it often happens, it's better to start looking at the demo because we are going to see how to set the detailed rows, and then we also investigate further in order to understand some interesting examples where detailed rows is actually extremely useful, along with Excel. Let's get started. I have here our usual Contoso model open in Power BI. There's nothing fancy here, we just have our usual model with product, sales, date, customer, and uh, where is it? Store. I also added a table, calculations, where I stored some measures. Calculations is not a table containing data, it's just a table to host measures and make it easier to discover them. And then I'm browsing it with Power BI. But for this article, we are not going to look at Power BI. Our main goal is to use Excel. So let's go to External Tool and open Analyze in Excel to open Excel connected with the current model. Now that we have Excel open, we have a pivot table and we can create a pivot table that contains the year month on the column and category and subcategory on the rows. Let's enlarge it a bit. And of course, we can expand it. Now, what if I want to understand what are the rows that in 2017 were sales of MP4? In Excel, you can simply double click on it and what you obtain is a table, a new Excel table that contains the details. You can actually obtain the very same result if you right click and you look at show details. Double clicking is actually the same operation. This is interesting to understand what is this result. You see that we have the sales order number, the line number, quantity, unit price, the net price, the unit cost and the currency code. Actually, we have something there, yes, also the exchange rate. These are all the columns in the sales table for the rows that are in 2017 and in MP4. So what happened is that uh, the filter context 2017 MP4 has been used in order to run a query that returned this result. You can actually look at this query. If uh, you go on uh, at the table, you right click, you go to table, and then edit query that you cannot see. Let me see if I can show you that table. Okay, here it is, edit query. It opens uh, this dialog from where you can look at the common text. Now, the font is very small and it's not formatted, so I just copy everything on the clipboard, and then we use uh, DAX Studio to look at the code that has been executed by uh, Excel. Here it is. Let me paste the code and format it. This is an MDX query that executes a drill-through operation. Drill-through operation from model. And then in the where part, you see that we state the measure that we want to inspect. And then the filter context is here in the MDX syntax that says MP4, MP3, and the year to 2017. It is relevant to note that we do not have in the query the set of columns that are being returned. We only say that we are interested in performing a drill through over the measure. The measure in this case is sales amount. 
So it's interesting to understand where do you define the set of columns? Because by default, the set of columns is the set of all the columns in the sales table, in the table that is hosting the measure that you are inspecting. Most of the times, uh, this set of columns includes a large number of columns like keys and numbers that are not relevant to the user. Whereas it might be more useful to provide informations like the product name, the customer name and other useful information that are more readable from a human point of view. That can be done if by setting the detailed rows expression. Detailed rows is a table expression that you define either at the table level or at the measure level and it defines the query that is executed as the result of a drill through operation. Let me show you that. We have the query which is executed. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's worth noting I'm only stating the measure that is being returned. The actual set of columns is defined in the detailed rows expression. In order to set the, de the detailed rows expression, we cannot use Power BI because there's no user interface to set it. We need to use Tabular Editor. And once Tabular Editor is open, we have uh, the all the information and if we look at the sales table you see that we have the option of setting the default detail rows expression this is a table expression that defines the columns returned when a drill through operation happens so we need a table expression we can use select columns let me enlarge the font a bit from the sales table and we decide what to return for example we might want the order number which is just the order number. Then we also provide the line number, which is the line I, line number. Then we might want to say to return the order date, which again is just the order date. And then it might be interesting to return the customer name, which is not part of the sales table, but we can reach it using the related function. So we can return the customer name using related customer, customer name. Here it is. Then we can provide the, the quantity. And again, that is a column in the sales table. So we just use sales quantity. Then we can produce uh, the net price, which again is still in the sales table i only need to find it sales and net price and then we are missing the product name maybe the product name is better here so we can provide the product name again using related product product name and maybe place the customer at the end you can customize this table expression the way you like now, this is the expression that I define at the sales table level because I'm working on the detail rows expression of sales, meaning that this is the default detail rows for all the measures in the sales table. Now that we set the detail rows expression, this means that whenever a drill through operation is started on the sales table, the engine returns the set of columns that we define instead of the default set. Let me see, show you that with Excel. This is the same report we had before. I saved the model. And if I now double click on the same cell, you see that the result is very different. Now, this is the set of columns defined in the detail rows expression. We have the order number, the line number, the order date, the product name that is much more useful than the information we had earlier, the quantity, the net price, and the customer name. By changing the detail rows expression, you can actually change what happens when that double click happens in Excel. This is especially useful whenever you use uh, uh, the calculations table. Let me recall you that. We have in the model a calculation table where I store margin and margin percentage. So margin and margin percentage, they are not in the sales table. They are in the calculations table, which happens to be an empty table. So what happens when I do a drill through over these tables? If I go back here, let me remove the sales amount and we replace it with the margin. 
remember margin is in the uh, calculations table if i double click here the result is empty we are not seeing any information because uh, the default set of rows is taken from the calculation table which happens to be empty so what we can do here is change the detailed rows expression of margin and margin percentage in such a way that they use the default detailed rows of the sales table that can be done if we go to calculation margin and we have the expression of the measure but we also can change the detail rows expression and we use the DAX detail rows function we say that the detail rows of the margin is the detail rows of sales amount now sales amount is still using the default detail rows of the sales table by invoking detail rows over sales amount we are directing the engine to use the detail rows of sales amount as the detail rows of margin and we can do the same for margin percentage or any measure that we have we need to save this then go back to excel in the right place here it is if i now double click on this you see that we have the same result that we would have had if we were using sales amount so if you are using a calculation table that proves to be extremely useful because it lets you choose which set of data is returned from which table and not always an empty table now whenever you use measures that do other calculations you might be interested in showing a different set again let me show you this with an example we can keep well let's remove the year from the columns and instead we place it on as a filter and we filter let's say 2019 february 2019 so we have the margin i prefer the sales amount now we have the sales amount for different categories and i have another measure sales amount previous year that of course does not return the data of 2019 it is returning the data of 2018 the thing is uh, by default if i double click on sales amount previous year you see that uh, i obtain uh, values which are in 2019 the reason is uh, the filter here is on 2019 and even though the measure is actually computing values on top of 2018 because the filter is on 2019 the drill through operation by default returns 2019 that is not the result that I want. I want my users to see that I'm actually computing data on top of the previous year. In order to change this, what I need to do is to change the, def the detail rows of this specific measure. Let me do that. We have the, not in calculation, but in sales, we have our sales amount previous year. Now, sales amount previous year computes the sales amount using same period last year. So it moves the filter context back one year. What we need to do is to do the same also for the detail rows expression. So if I go on detail rows expression, I just copy the measure to save some time. And this needs to be a table expression. So it's not going to use calculate, but rather calculate table. And then it's not calling the sales amount measure instead it's calling the detail rows of sales amount so what this query is executing is running the detail rows over sales amount after having moved the filter context back one year as usual we save it we go to excel and if i now double click on the same cell you see that i obtain data that is in 2018 and not in 2019 this is very important uh, and uh, you need to do this operation that is uh, moving the filter context in the right place whenever your measure is uh, changing the filter context in such a way that the data that you return as a result of a drill through operation is actually the real data that has been used to compute the value let me show you this with another example because we have a calculation that computes the year over year that again applies some business logic that we want to replicate in the drill-through operation. 
Let me show you that with the demo. We have this measure that computes the sales year over year that produces a number when there are values both in the current year and in the previous year. Now, right now, if I double click on this uh, cell, what I obtain uh, are just uh, rows in 2019, so the sales of uh, the current year. That is not the kind of result that I want to produce. It would be way better to produce uh, a result that is actually useful, like uh, the sales amount of the previous year and of the current year for only the rows where there are actually values in both places, or so the rows that have been actually used. Now, if we look at the code of the measure, not publish, but look at sales year over year, you see that, that the logic is that uh, it computes the value in the current period, the value in the previous year, previous period, and it returns the result only even if there are values in both periods. What we need to do is replicate the same logic also in the detail rows expression. Besides, we do not want to produce individual product rows because uh, when you are comparing year over year, it's more interesting to see the individual dates or whatever. But in our example, we want to show the dates that, are, that have been used with uh, the sales amount in the current year and the sales amount in the previous year. So we are going to change the detail rows expression quite heavily this time. We change the granularity. We do not retrieve rows from sales. Instead, we retrieve rows from date if these rows have been used in the model, in the measure, sorry. Let's do that with tabular editor. We have our sales year over year measure. Here is the code. And we cannot use the very same code because as I said, we are going to change the granularity. We want the dates when the dates that have been used for the calculation. So we first retrieve a variable dates where we just store the distinct of date date. Then we want the values. So we iterate over the dates. We start creating another variable details that uses add columns over dates. And we retrieve, uh, let's say, the quantity, which is a total quantity. And then we want the quantity in the previous year which is, we need to use calculate, total quantity, and we use same period last year on a new row over date, date. And then we do the same for the sales amount. We want the sales that uses sales a sales amount and uh, we also want the sales in the previous year that computes sales amount for the previous year i have a lot of mistakes here and there yes the first one is here and then we have another one here Okay, now, once we reach this point, we have computed for each date the quantity, the quantity in the previous year, the sales, and the sales in the previous year. We need to remove from this set the dates that have not been used. So we can compute the result, and we use filter. We filter the um, details, I called it details details and then we need to apply a condition the rows that have been used for the calculation are all the rows that have either sales for the current year or for the previous year remember that in the measure we check this at the total level so we check the value of the entire filter context. So the rows that have been used are all the rows that have a value either for the current year or for the previous year. So we remove all the rows that, are, that have only blank. So we check that it's not true that 
uh, quantity is blank and quantity previous year should not be blank and sales and at the same time is blank sales previous year and then we close the knot so what we are doing here we remove all the rows that have all blanks if a row does has a value anywhere we just return it because that is part of the result at the aggregated level last step return result now this code computes first the details changing the granularity at the day level it computes four columns and then produces the result only if there is some value somewhere in order to avoid returning rows that would contain blanks everywhere once everything is done we can save it go back to excel and now when i started read through operation over sales year of a year you see that the result is what i want it contains only the dates where there are sales or quantities either in the current year or in the previous year you might notice that this row does not have quantity for the current year it only has it at the previous year but again we are considering the aggregate level because the measure is computed at the aggregate level whereas the detail rows expression is computed row by row and uh, needs to return a table expression i want to show you another example where you might actually use detail rows again in a creative way back at the time of multidimensional you had the option of creating multiple actions so multiple types of drill through operations that the user could use to see different details so they may they might be looking at a pivot table and inspect the details at the product level or the details at the customer level and you had the option of defining different sets of results returned to produce the numbers in a tabula you do not have this option you only define one detail rows expression for uh, the measure so the granularity of the details that you can produce is at the measure expression but what you can do is create measures that have the goal of letting the user go further in examining the details of the numbers for example we can create a specific measure that shows how to inspect the set of products or the set of customers that are under a calculation that you do so the measure is not going to return just a number it will return a string like show me the details of five customers three customers 12 customers the number of customers that are in the current filter context and when you double click on that string you will obtain the customer details we can also do the same for the product so we have different measures that produce different actions let me show you that with the demo I want to create a special measure that, uh, whose only goal is to tell the engine that by double clicking on the cell they will see the number of product. So we create a new measure. Uh, where is it? Create a measure. Okay, we call the measure, let's call it customer details. The result of customer details is a string. So we need, first of all, the number of customers. And uh, the number of customer is just uh, a distinct count, uh, no blank, uh, of customer, customer key or customer name. But we can use not customer, sorry, sales customer key. So that returns uh, the number of customers that are present in sales. And then we build a string that returns the result. So it's a string that contains show, followed by the number of customers. 
uh, and customer might be one customer might be more than one customer so we can add an if logic that says if a number of customers is greater than one then we add the s let me show you that this way it is a bit better so it will show it will say show 10 customer s because it's greater than one if there is only one customer then it will be show one customer without the s and finally we return directly if there is actually a value if the number of customer is greater or equal than one then we return the number of customers if number of custom not the number of customer but the result if there are no customers we do not return anything now before creating the detail rows uh, let me show you what happens when you use this measure so we need to save this go back to excel to our pivot table and we have now and uh, we need to refresh now we have customer details let me get rid of some measures like sales amount and sales year over year we only have sales amount and we can add customer details you see it show it says show the two customers show 44 customers show whatever number of customer has been selected now what i want to do is that when i double click on show two customers i actually show the details at the customer level and to do that we set the detail roles on the customer on this specific measure so we want for the detail rows to produce results from the customer so we summarize sales and we start to retrieve values like customer let me use customer name and then the city maybe you are also interested in the state and in the country so i'm building a table that contains information about the customer then we save this go back to excel and now when i double click on show to customers you see that i obtain the customers that happen to be in the current filter context the ones that have been used for the customer and I know there were two because it says show two customer. If I go to show 44 customers, I will see a larger number of customers. And obviously you could add the sales amount or other relevant information that are useful to inspect the details. We can also do the same for the product. Let's do that as an exercise. So we go here and we create a product details table, a product details calculation we can just copy this and paste it here and we call it product details this is going to retrieve not the number of customers but the number of products oh i made a mistake as usual number of products we retrieve not the customer key but the product key and then the result is show number of product that's it now we have the number of products and we also need to change the detail rows expression that we do we'll do a summarize of sales but this time retrieves values from the product table so we group it by product code for example by product name and uh, we can produce uh, the brand and we can also produce the product unit price that returns some more values and then if needed you can also add other calculations uh, like uh, amount which is uh, the sales amount so you end up building a table i miss the quotes here just in case product is a keyword okay 
So I build a table that produces useful information. We save this, go back to Excel, look at our table. Let's get rid of customer details. We need to refresh as usual. Now I have product details, I add it, and it's so show seven products. If I double click on show seven products, what I obtain is a table that contains the product code, the product name, the brand, the unit price, and the sales amount. So you have seen that we have been able to define measures that perform specific actions. As you have seen, using detailed rows proves to be quite powerful because it gives you the capability of letting the users inspect the detailed information about the numbers and the values that have been used. You can customize the detailed rows, so you can just return a set of columns from a table. That is the default behavior. It is simple, but yet very effective because it gives your users the confidence that the numbers they are seeing, they actually have a correct source and they can check them. You can also go a step farther, changing the granularity as we did for the year over year. And you can also end up building specific measures whose only purpose is to trigger the drill through operation. It's a very powerful feature that uh, it's better to learn because it gives you more power in the analytical reports that you will build if they are used through Excel. Power BI, as of today, does not use uh, the, data, the drill through. Drill through is implemented in a very different way. But if you are using Excel, well, learning the secrets of, the secrets of detail rows uh, is kind of important and it improves the quality of your reports. Enjoy, DAX! Mm -hmm.